tonight. The cost of living is a struggle for so many people, but for those living in our province's north, what was once expensive is now even worse. Also, as the men's World Cup final gets closer, we take a look at how some women are sharing in the spotlight. Plus, a new take on old treats. Why one comedian says some classic Christmas treats are way beyond their best before date. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Friday, December 16th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for being here. We hear it nearly every day. Inflation is gouging us at the grocery stores. Gas prices fluctuating. Interest rates climbing. But if you live in northern Saskatchewan, the cost of living is much higher. Laura Sharpaletti has more. Victor Fern has lived in Fond du Lac, Saskatchewan his whole life. He's seen affordability change significantly over the years, but now things could be worse than ever for the remote fly-in community in the north. The prices have gone up probably um, close to 100% as to what they were probably about a year ago or so. In a Fond du Lac grocery store, a club pack of Ritz crackers cost $26. A bag salad kit cost $14. A bag of mandarin oranges now costs $14. Coffee Mate creamer costs $11. And 24 bottles of Aquafina brand water costs $53. Fortunately, the people of Fond du Lac Dene First Nation still have their traditional ways of getting food. We're, we're kind of lucky in a way uh, that we live right on Lake Athabasca where there's plenty of fish. And our our main diet is uh, the barren land caribou. And you know, so we stock up on that over the winter and that'll get us by through, through the summer months. But as with everything in the north, hunting comes at a financial cost. The price of fuel for snowmobiles has spiked. Fern says a solo trip costs about $2,000. First Nation bands will often organize community hunts, but to provide one caribou for each home, a single hunt can cost about $200,000. The MLA for the area says the people of the North are resilient and will get through the hard times. He says the province's $500 affordability checks have helped. I talked to some of the constituents and uh, they were quite happy to receive that. Uh, that meant, you know, they could get extra groceries or pay down a utility. Fern says the checks aren't providing long-term help. Well, I think, uh, like, everybody's happy in, in the community of Fond du Lac. When you get a, a $500 check, you'll probably be happy for a couple hours until you go to the Norton store and, and buy a few things and it's all gone. Still, Fern says this is the first time he can recall the provincial government helping his community. He says they are often told that they are the federal government's responsibility. He says he would like to see the provincial government help remote communities more, starting with a safe transportation road out of Fond du Lac. Meanwhile, leaders of the Fond du Lac First Nation say high costs are ending traditions such as trapping. We are losing our culture because of us costly we're living up here. Isidore says no matter what happens with inflation, northern Saskatchewan needs help because culture is the glue that holds his people together. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. First Nations leaders have a message for Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe. Kill the controversial Saskatchewan First Act or face consequences. Chiefs across the province gathered in Saskatoon for a news conference today. They say the Saskatchewan First Act claims exclusive resource rights for the provincial government. But the chiefs say this ignores the legal and moral duty to share the land and resources with First Nations. The chiefs say they are tired of being ignored and they're ready to take action. We have mandates from the chiefs and assembly to move forward <coughs> politically, legally, and we're about to the point where we're going to start blockading. 
Chief Bobby Cameron says he'll leave it to individual First Nations communities when action is taken, but the FSIN will be there to fight with them. A government official sent an email to CBC News. It states the Saskatchewan First Act will not infringe on Aboriginal and treaty rights. The Electoral Boundaries Commission has recommended Saskatchewan's federal riding map remain largely unchanged. It's a pivot from an earlier suggestion to create a new riding in the centre of Saskatoon. The commission spent several months reviewing the current 14 ridings and received feedback from the public. This spring, it proposed a change which would add a fourth riding for Saskatoon, right in the heart of the city. It would have been the one strictly urban riding in the province, but the commission's final report tabled earlier this month removed that riding and kept the status quo. A polling and elections analyst says the biggest change was the decision to move Meadow Lake out of the northern riding. The changes that are in the final report are less significant than we saw in the preliminary report, uh, especially when it comes to the changes that are going to be made to Saskatoon. Uh, instead, the map, instead of creating an urban riding in the center of the city, uh, it's just instead going to be more or less the same map with some changes here or there and uh, not too many changes in Regina. Uh, the biggest changes in the northern riding is in uh, Desnethe, Mississippi, Churchill River. Uh, that riding now becomes one that is going to be very, very hard for the Conservatives to win. Uh, so that actually could have a, a pretty big electoral impact uh, when the next election is held. Grenier says the Conservatives would have lost the last two votes in the northern riding of Desnethe, Mississippi, Churchill River without Meadow Lake. The changes take effect in 2024. Regina City Council has passed its operations budget after three long days of deliberation. In the end, Council agreed on a 3.67% mill rate increase for 2023. That translates to about $7 more in taxes for the average homeowner. This increase is lower than what was originally recommended in the municipal budget. That means city administration has been given the task of finding about $3 million in efficiency reductions. The amendment also effectively ended an attempt by some councillors to include more money in the budget for homelessness. Airports and border officials say they've taken steps to make holiday travels smoother for Canadians. Many are hoping not to see a repeat of long lines and many issues we saw over the summer. But will the chaos come back if workers keeping the airports running get sick? Sophia Harris has the story. I'm traveling back to Mexico for the for the season. We're coming up to one of the busiest travel times of the year, and some passengers are wondering if they're in for a bumpy ride. I heard that um, they are short of people here. Their concerns follow this past summer's travel chaos, which included long lines, missing baggage, and flight delays so bad, they earned Toronto's Pearson International Airport infamy as one of the world's worst. The federal government says it has new measures in place to help ensure a smooth journey. Access to these express lanes. At Pearson and at Montreal and Vancouver's international airports, there are now express lanes for passengers who fill out their customs declaration using the ArriveCan app. I've seen people go through as fast as 14 seconds. It's about giving people an option to use tools to facilitate faster border crossing for themselves. Airports and the government have also gone on hiring sprees to increase staffing. Sometimes a lot of planes will converge all at one time and there could be a little bit of excess wait times. But of course here at the CBSA, we ensure that we have the proper uh, staffing levels. But there's still turbulence ahead. We're seeing a higher frequency of sick calls. The union representing hundreds of ground crew workers at Pearson warns staffing could still be an issue due to spiking cases of COVID-19 and the flu. I certainly you can see up to... Um, you know, as many as 30, 40 sick calls in a day, which has a significant impact on the operation, especially if they're not adequately staffed with relief crews. And for passengers who do experience flight delays, they'll likely be in for another long wait if they wind up filing a complaint with the Canadian Transportation Agency. The CTA is dealing with an unprecedented backlog of more than 30,000 complaints. It can take up to 18 months to have a case, um, a case uh, processed at the CTA. The government says it's working on that problem too. Sophia Harris, CBC News, Toronto. The FIFA Men's Soccer World Cup comes to an end this Sunday, but some women 
are also in focus during the tournament, and that includes Stephanie Frappard. The French referee became the first woman to take charge of a men's World Cup game. And as Theresa Kleem reports, some female officials from Saskatchewan are also on track to becoming the next stars in the international referee scene. Shakriya Tajik fell in love with soccer after moving from Iran to Canada as a teenager. The young referee is originally from Afghanistan. Ten years ago, she took her first entry-level course for officials in the province. These days, she is mentoring the next generation of referees in Saskatchewan. Tajik's goal is to eventually get her FIFA badge and start refing at the highest level. I don't see it as refing a men's game or a women's game. I see it as just being there, being part of the game and being involved in the game and doing my best. So, um, yeah, I don't see the <laughs> gender. At this World Cup in Qatar, female referees were making sports history. French referee Stephanie Frappard became the first woman to take charge of a men's World Cup game earlier in the tournament. She was one of six female officials at the World Cup, but the majority of the officials at the tournament, more than 90%, are still men. Chantal Boudreau is an assistant referee originally from Regina. She is one of 17 Canadians on the international FIFA list of referees and assistant referees. Boudreau isn't working at this year's World Cup, but like Tajik, she patrols the touchlines as an assistant ref during both men's and women's matches. Of course, there's always going to be fans that were, are going to negate it and say, no, women don't deserve to be in this game. They don't deserve to be on the pitch with these men. They're not fast enough. But at the end of the day, we have to run fitness tests. We have to train just as hard as these men do. Saskatchewan has more men than women registered as referees. But the Provincial Soccer Association says match appointments are made based on qualification, not gender. And the number of female officials is growing. We're starting to see the benefits of all of the work because things don't just change overnight. They take time and dedication and we're seeing the impact of that time and dedication from those that have been involved in our refereeing world um, really making an impact now. As an assistant referee, Tachik worked at her first international tournament this year in the United States. And eventually she hopes to follow Boudreaux's footsteps. Ultimate goal is to be part of that, uh, the international list so we can referee and be part of the professional game, and part of the um, international level game. So that's um, hopefully... <laughs> I, yeah, I'm working my way to get there, but we'll see how things go. While Tajik is working towards her FIFA badge, Boudreau says she hopes to get a call for the Women's World Cup next year. Teresa Klim, CBC News, Saskatoon. We are nine sleeps from Christmas, and that means Christmas Eve is next Saturday. That also means this weekend is your last chance to grab local goodies from the Regina Farmers Market Holiday Edition. It's set up at the Cooperator Center from 9 till 3 tomorrow and Sunday. What kind of weather will you have for shopping this weekend? Ethan will have the details after the break. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. 22 model clear out is on now. Welcome back. Our CBC weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. How lovely to see that glowing orb in the sky today. Yes, that is indeed the sun, Sam. It is out, but it will not last for very long. Unfortunately, we have more snow on the way for portions of the province. And just a couple days ago, we were dealing with weather statements in southeastern Saskatchewan. Now it's a snowfall warning for Meadow Lake, the Battlefords, and Lloyd Minster. Starting to see snow move into that area now. Heavier bands in Alberta still at this point. There is a little bit of snow in southwestern Saskatchewan as well. Much of the western half of the province now cloaked in cloud cover, but we are still seeing some clear conditions uh, in the eastern half at this point. It's all because of this low pressure system that is over Alberta right now, bringing some pretty heavy snow there. It works its way eastward through the night tonight. I think we'll see the heaviest snow of this system probably overnight tonight into tomorrow morning and maybe up until about the noon hour. And then it shifts its way southward and areas outside of that warning area, Swift Current, Maple Creek, 
Kindersley Rose Town just because you're not in the warning doesn't mean that you uh, won't see a little bit of significant snowfall as well. But for eastern regions, we're really not expecting too much from this. Even as we get into Sunday, that system still could be sticking around in the southwest and that low pressure system has migrated into the U.S. But then it begins to move eastward and through Sunday and Monday, we could still see some light snow showers and maybe some flurries through much of south and central Saskatchewan before clearing on Tuesday. Overnight tonight, as I say, some pretty heavy amounts, especially up around Lloydminster, maybe 15 centimeters of snow in that area, a few centimeters possible along the rest of the western part of the province, and the rest of us really not seeing anything until we get into tomorrow afternoon and through uh, to Sunday morning. That's when amounts really start picking up. Close to 10 centimeters in west central and southwestern Saskatchewan. Lloydminster at Meadow Lake likely getting up into the 15 to 20 centimeter range. Saskatoon, Moose Jaw, Cinnaboya, 5 to 10 centimeters. Areas impacted by the Colorado low, though, will likely escape this, even moving into Monday with just some light uh, snow flurries after that. And now for the north of the province, you're largely going to escape this. Buffalo Narrows may be up to around 5 centimeters. Meadow Lake maybe a little more than 11 centimeters. This is through uh, to about Monday morning. Now this is not a clipper system coming from Alberta, so wind gusts will not be overly high, but we still could have some gusts around 50, maybe 60 kilometers an hour in the Lloydminster area. But by Saturday afternoon, and especially into Sunday, we should see uh, winds start to diminish. That having been said, there is the possibility that we could see some visibilities reduced in around Lloydminster, and particular concern for the Highway 21 corridor between just east of Lloydminster down to Maple Creek. That's where we could see some visibilities drop, but that is going to improve largely as we get into Saturday and even more so on Sunday. Regina, our next few days will be marked by some increasing cloud cover tomorrow, some snow flurries on uh, Sunday with that system, and then just cold after that with some very frigid wind chills into the minus 30s as high pressure starts to take over. Saskatoon, again, a little bit more snowfall, probably 5 to 10 centimeters for you, a little bit more on Sunday. Temperature is going to get very close to minus 30. Enjoy the uh, quote-unquote warm temperatures this weekend uh, while you can, Sam. I don't like this one. I don't <laughs> like either. this one at all. That's my Grinch face. I, uh, I wish I could change the forecast. I really do. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. You bet. Well, some Saskatoon residents were given a unique astrological show last night. One man told CBC he just happened to be looking outside, looking up at Mars, when a meteor flashed across the sky. This video was captured by another person in Saskatoon. Astronomers say it was the tail end of the Geminids meteor shower. We'll be back after the break. This year, we're encouraging our viewers to make the season kind and donate to the food banks of Saskatchewan. And as a thank you, we've partnered with some local chefs and home cooks to create a recipe book full of delicious and affordable dishes. Heather Morrison stopped by the Bate Chai Bar Restaurant in Saskatoon to hear more. Today, we're making adasi, which is like a Persian uh, stew. Hi, my name is Diana Gray, and I'm the chef at Bote Chai Bar. I work in the Persian kitchen and we make Persian food. It's called adasi, so it's a lentil and potato based soup. And um, it's been in the, my boss's Parviz Yazani's family in a very long time with just a little tweak of my own you know, spices and stuff. So we have turmeric, some minced garlic, but, um, and we wanted to create this especially for the brunch, uh, instead of, you know, just having like a potato or, or something. So we wanted to make it different. And we came up with this idea and it's been very popular, especially with lentil, you know, in Saskatchewan now. Hi, I'm Parviz Yazdani. I'm the owner of Bote Persian Cafe and Persian Kitchen. Every family has their own variation of it. And it also has regional variations in Iran. Our family recipe is the one that made its way here to Saskatoon. So what makes it your family recipe? What's unique about it? So it's always down to one touch of love. You know, usually it's a little pinch of salt here, a little extra garlic there, or potatoes, the size of the chunks of potatoes. Everybody can make their own variations of it. Peel and dice. Well, there are two reasons that we wanted to be a part of this. One is that we see ourselves very much a part of the fabric of Saskatoon. And uh, we believe that this fabric has different shades and different colors and different tastes. So that was our contribution. 
And the other thing was that it was an easy way for us to pay back because it was a partnership with the CBC and it was also a way to share. And then we have three cups of brown lentil. Really, really important for us to give back to the community because of all the, you know, all the support and everything that we get back from, from people. So I'm very grateful. Like I feel, you know, I'm very grateful for any opportunity I have to help other people. Depressing time for some people because it's about sharing and if you don't have people to share with, whether you're an immigrant and your family is not with you uh, or for any number of reasons your circumstances dictate that you're by yourself, uh, it's very important for us to acknowledge that and uh, most immigrants, especially if you're not um, from a Christian background, uh, then Christmas is not a religious holiday and it's not a cultural holiday. So you kind of fall through the cracks and you end up uh, spending it alone. It's been really, really popular. Like since we started this launch of this, this um, soup, everybody who had it, you know, just keep asking for the recipe. And you can find that recipe in our special Make the Season Kind recipe book. If you want a copy like this one, go to cbc.ca slash BeKindSK. And thanks to you, more than $64,000 have already been donated to the campaign. And Ethan is back with one last look at tonight's weather. And I am hungry after watching that segment for sure. And uh, we are going to be a little chilly tomorrow in uh, Regina, minus 20 at 8 a.m. Winds are going to be light, so wind chill's not going to be so bad in the morning. In the afternoon, though, we're going to be seeing a little bit of increasing cloudiness right around minus 16, kind of where our daytime high is going to be. Winds out of the east around 20 kilometers an hour. Saskatoon, of course, a little more snowfall for you, a little windier too. So that means by the time we get to the noon hour, Likely going to be seeing that wind uh, increase, the snow uh, blowing a little bit more, and uh, temperatures will be around minus 15 as well. In Regina, we told you about the farmer's market, Saskatoon, having one of your own, and you might just see Santa as well. He's going to be there around 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Little chilly, little windy, Sam, but overall, I think it's going to be a, a nice Christmassy type of day. Said it's a big deal. I think it's worth it. I think so. All right, thanks, Ethan. You bet. And before we go, it's a debate around many dinner tables this time of year. Fruitcake, do or don't? The controversial topic got comedian and CBC contributor Craig Silliphant thinking about all those other traditional Christmas treats. Here's his top five list of foods that should be banned this holiday season. Things that are ruining Christmas, food edition. Christmas pudding. It's a dense brick with nasty little green cherries in it, with a sauce that doesn't know if it's gravy or caramel. It's only good for building houses and hurling at home intruders. Mincemeat tarts. Like many of these, it was invented in medieval times before they had sugar. It was made with rendered animal fat, mm, vinegar, and fermented meat. Fermented meat! They are evil, personified. Even the modern version with fruit and sugar is gross. Eggnog. Drinking eggs is like drinking mucus. Usually alcohol makes things better, but not this. Merry Christmas, here's your rum and mucus. Liqueur chocolates, the disgusting Trojan horse of Christmas. Your mouth is all ready for cherry or caramel, but inside, bam, old man liquor goo. So that's what disappointment tastes like. Like opening a gift and realizing it sucks and you have to put on that brave face so you don't hurt their feelings when you really want to yell, what were you thinking? Candy canes, so classic, so Christmas, so gross. I don't mean cherry or root beer candy canes, but like peppermint. Nothing like a candy that tastes like a blast of mouthwash or chewing on toothpaste. I offer them to my kids and they're like, No thanks, can I just have vegetables? Have fun picking it out of your teeth until next Christmas. Christmas should be fun and delicious. Those decadent calories should taste great. Stop serving punishment, humbug. Stop serving punishment. That's it for us this week. For news at any time, you can head to our website or to the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel where you can subscribe. Glenn and Ethan will be back with more at 11. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.